Hi, hobby friends. Let's talk about very, very small things. You guys seem to like the video last week on the tiny, tiny space elves, and it just so happens I had a little order of space skeletons on the way too, so why don't we take a look at those this week, and we can have a little think about colour schemes and colour theory along the way too. Although I very nearly forgot to do it, the first job after getting these little guys cleaned up and stuck on a base is to give them some basing material. Now, as I mentioned last time, I'm pretty new to this 6mm scale stuff. I mean, I collected a little bit way back when Epic was still a supported game from GW, but I was a teenager then who had literally no idea what he was doing, and we can only be thankful that no minis or photos survive from that time. What seems to be working on the bases for me though are these texture pastes. I used AK Dry Ground for the elves and thought I'd give Muddy Ground a go for this lot. There's a good range of grid sizes in there, from what reads at this scale as little rocks or even grass tufts up to bigger stones. If you've any other ideas for 6mm basing options, let me know down below, I am all ears. Right, with that done, it's time to start thinking about colour. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel on these. While there are lots of very cool looking alternative schemes out there for Necrons, since this will be my first full force, I thought it might be nice just to do a more traditional silver skeletons with glowing green eyes. You know, good old sci-fi Halloween Necrons. For my base coat though, we're going for a dark purple tone. If you're a dabbler in colour theory, you'll probably have an idea of why, and if not, well, here's why. Purple is, more or less, the complementary of green. All that means is it sits on the opposite side of the colour wheel to green, and accepted wisdom would have it that that means those two colours look good together. Now, I don't want to be flippant about accepted wisdom here. There are lots of applications for all the terms related to those traditional colour schemes, and when you're grasping around for colour schemes and approaches to colour, they can be useful. But I think it would be doing a disservice to stop at just colours opposite each other look good together. Does this look good? Or this? I mean, sure, it pops, but is it good? Is this better? Or do I need this to make it work? All of this is very, very arbitrary, but my main point is I don't really think you can do much with the usual suspects of analogous, complementary, triad, split complementary and tetradic schemes. They aren't the complete picture. Let's look at these two swatches again. What if we just chill out a bit on the saturation, just on one colour? Again, we're still very much in personal opinion land here, but that feels so much more balanced to me. Instead of two colours screaming at me, I have a ground and an accent. And what if we change something like this as well? We get a different feeling again. My point is that it is at least as important, probably more important, to balance your values as it is to balance your hues. And colour distribution, how much purple versus how much green, is also very significant. So, a deep, slightly desaturated purple set up to balance my upcoming zingy green accents. But didn't I say we were doing a traditional Necron scheme? We are, and here comes that silver now, starting with Vallejo Metal Colour Gun Metal. For this paint job at least, and with the neutral silvers I'm using in particular, we can consider silver as just a sort of snazzier cousin to grey and white. It still has an influence on our colour scheme, but not a chromatic one, more of just a distributive one. All that grey scale pushes our colours into the nooks and crannies. And that's exactly where the purple ends up after a spritz of silver, in the shadowy nooks and crannies of the mini. A quick dry brush of a brighter silver over the heads and shoulders of the troops helps with that pop factor, and then it's time to hit those details. Now, to be honest, for all the highbrow talk of colour theory, a lot of the time decisions are made in a much more practical, prosaic way. We need a regal feel, and modern Necron schemes call for gold, so gold it is. 
But if you are so inclined, don't forget that there is a whole world of color within every hue, and with the right context you can make anything look like almost anything. I need these guys done quickly though, because these are a functional force for me. These guys are a playtester force for my good pal, Chris. Hiya. Hey Chris, you fancy another game of BC? Yeah, sure mate. Oh, nice one, cool. So, uh, how about next? BC, if you're curious, stands for Bellum Calum, which is a little fan game I'm putting together. If you like 40k's ancient lore and fancy getting in on the development of a War in Heaven era 6mm scale war game, head over to the Discord linked below. It's early days yet, but I am really excited to get this project on its feet. Okay, back to the painting. It's all just filling in the details now. We've got a chance to feature that purple a bit more prominently on the hero's cape here. Note, 6mm scale is no excuse not to shade our volumes, folks. And then, we need to get some definition back with a very thin oil wash. This is really just to recess shade, no weathering or tone adjustments. So just a simple pass of thin paint on the glossy silver should be enough. I didn't even clean these guys up afterwards, to be honest. With that dry, it's finally time to add that green. I'm using Golden's High Flow Fluorescent Green and a little bit of Thalo Cyanine Yellow Shade for the shadowy bits. For a fluorescent paint, the golden high flow fluorescent green has a surprisingly good coverage and it pulls nicely in the eye details here, so I didn't even bother with a white base coat as I normally would. These sort of details bring a mini to life at any scale, so I would implore you to embrace the detail painting if you're up for it. Get your arms nice and supported, try and relax, and with a good brush and the right paint consistency, I have faith that you can tackle teeny teeny things like this. If you've been finding any of this interesting or useful by the way, you can help other people get pointed at the video by hitting the thumbs up, and subscribing will help you see more of my vids in the future. If you really, really like the channel, there's a nice cheap patron you can support me at to help keep the paints flowing, and of course, the free Discord server to hang out with me and other even awesomer folks whenever you like. Alright, let's take a look at what we ended up with. Nice! Some pretty traditional looking space skeletons ready to wreak havoc in the galaxy's distant past. In the end, I opted for a cyan grey on the bases, which, if you squint, sort of fills out the last corner of a tetradic scheme formed by the purple, green and yellowish gold, but really, if we're honest, I went with that because, well, I thought it would look cool. What do you guys think? Are you tempted to dive into the world of 6mm? Or maybe even explore colour theory a bit more? Let me know your thoughts and questions down below, and I will see you next time.